we're now going to take a look at converting decimal values into binary values. Now, once again, for this type of calculation, we're going to be using this binary table, which basically lists the values of 2 to the power of 0 right up 2 to the power of 7. As we can see, once again, the pattern of numbers that these equal 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 128. Always a double of the previous number from right to left. Now, when converting an actual decimal number to a binary number, we're actually starting on the left-hand side of this table at the 2 to the power of 7 or 128 in the case of 8-bit binary. So let's set this up in order to do some calculations. So what I'm going to be doing first is the decimal number of 1, okay, which is basically 1 with a little 10 next to it showing that it's decimal. The answer we're going to fill in here. And down here we're going to be putting in the zeros and 1s as we calculate it in this actual binary number. Up here, we're going to be using the remainders. Okay, so let's set it up, our table, and let's do this calculation. So we start here on the left-hand side, and basically in our calculation, we go, how many times does 128 go into 1? Well, it doesn't fit, so it is 0. Okay, and the remainder is 1 still, because 1 still active. We do the same with 64, which is 0 once again, remainder 1. 32 can't go into 1, so that is 0, remainder 1. 16 can't go into 1, so it is 0 once again, remainder 1. 8 can't go into 1, so 0, remainder 1. 4 can't go into 1, 0, remainder 1. 2 can't go into 1, 0, remainder 1, but 1 can go into 1. So we put a 1 there, and now there is no remainder, so the remainder is 0. So basically that gives us the answer of 1, okay, and we put a little 2 next to it to show us that it's binary. Let's do another number and see how we go here. So the next number is 10, okay? It's base 10, so we know that is the number 10. Does 128 go into 10? No. Does 64 go into 10? No. Does 32 go into 10? No. Does 16 go into 10? No. Does 8 go into 10? Yes, it does. So it's a 1, okay? And the remainder is 2. So now we go, does 4 go into 2? No, it doesn't remainder still 2. Does 2 go into 2? Yes, it does, and we have no remainder. Okay, and obviously 1 can't go into 0, so our answer in this case is 1, 0, 1, 0, okay, in binary. Okay, the next number, 55. So, let's do it again. 128 does not go in, 64 does not go in, 32 goes in once, and our remainder is 23. So now, uh, the 16 go into 23. 16 does go into 23 once, okay, with the remainder of 7. So 7 is the new number that we'll be calculating with. So 8 does not go into 7, but 4 does go into 7, okay, with the remainder of 3. 2 goes into 3 with the remainder of 1, and 1 obviously goes into 1 rounding us off perfectly. And that's the thing you've got to notice with ca these calculations. By the end of the table, you should have absolutely no remainder. You should always have a zero. If you do have any uh, anything greater than zero at the end, it means you've made a miscalculation. So our final number here is 110111. Okay, let's look at the number 100. So 128 doesn't go in, but 64 does go in once, remainder 36. 32 does go in once, remainder 4. So we pretty much know now that it's going to be zeros until we actually get to the 4 column, okay, which will be a 1, and now the rest is just 0. So our final number in this case is 1100100. So can you see how you start seeing patterns and you know which numbers are going to go in where? And really it's just a matter of knowing what numbers are going to help you equal the amount that the decimal number is, and that's where the ones will go. So the final number we'll look at is 250. So we'll do a large number just so we can see all the numbers in action. So 128 does obviously go in in this case. Okay, remainder 122. 64 goes in once, remainder 58. 32 goes in once, remainder 26. 16 goes in once, remainder 10. 8 goes in once. Okay, remainder 2, 4 obviously doesn't go into 2, but 2 goes in perfectly, which gives us no more remainder, okay, and there is our final number.
Okay, one, 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 zero, one, zero. So I hope this gives you an understanding of how you can convert decimal numbers into binary numbers using this base two table once again. Once you know the equivalent numeric values of all these base two numbers, it's basically a matter of trying to create how much the number equals using those numbers only once. Okay, at the end of this calculation, you should have no remainder, otherwise you know you've made an error. But give these a try and I hope this helps.